Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our session today on Career Hour on Management. I'm excited to have our team from TransPerfect here who are gonna uh, just have a conversation with us about um, being a manager, you know, and what does it mean to be a manager? And just as a recap, we're doing the, this webinar series uh, to just give you a glimpse of what it is to be in different positions. The, we kicked it off uh, with linguistics last month. This month is going to be on management. And then I want you to stay tuned for the ones that we'll have in the, in the upcoming months. So with that, Tabby, I'm going to just uh, allow you to introduce yourself and then introduce the group, and then we'll kick it off from here. Awesome. Well, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm Tabby or Tabitha, whichever you prefer. Um, I work in strategic initiatives for TransPerfect. I've been with the company for about nine years. So all of us who are here joining you today are joining from TransPerfect, which is a language and technology solutions company. If you're curious to learn more about what we do, um, we've done a number of sessions through CFES Brilliant Pathways. All of those are available recorded. Um, so I'd encourage you to take a look if you're curious but today we're gonna to talk really high level about what it means to be a manager. Um, joining me today, I have Jin Lee, who's our Senior Vice President of Global Production, Momiko Taniguchi, who is Production Manager for Intellectual Property, and Monica Mora, who is a Production Manager of all of APAC Production. So that's all of our Asia Pacific teams. So I'm gonna let them take over from here and really dig in, introduce themselves and tell you all a lot more about management. Hi everybody. Uh, thank you for giving us the time to present to you a little bit about um, management. My name is Jin Lee. I'm Senior Vice President of Global Production. Um, I've been with the company eight, over 18 years now and I've been managing for over 15 years. So I started off at a really young age. Uh, I currently manage around 1,500 employees around the world um, in locations like Japan, Hong Kong, London, uh, Lomiko and, and Monica are part of the management team in San Francisco. Um, and yeah, uh, I've been, I think it's really important. Well, we'll go into a little bit once uh, Mamiko and Monica introduce themselves on, on why right. it's important to talk about man what management is. Hi everyone, I'm Mamiko Taniguchi and I'm in our San Francisco office. Well, today I'm working from home, but I've been with TransPerfect for five, uh, 10 years now and I manage a team of project managers who specialize in patent translations. And it's, I'm excited to be here with you all. Hi everyone, I am Monica Mora. I am also a production manager here in San Francisco. I help support our Asia teams, uh, Tokyo, Hong Kong, and Seoul. And we're a group of project managers here based in the US, uh, supporting from a US time zone. And I also have a team out in London. All right, next, next slide. So pretty exciting stuff, right? Why is it, why are we talking about management? Because I, um, so any sort of job or structure that you know of will have a manager. So for example, in a school, then you got the teachers and the teachers have their boss is the principal and the principal's boss is superintendent. I think that's right. Uh, and then it goes up from there, whether, you know, whether you're in a coach or an athletic director or in any sort of company or corporation, you're gonna have a group of workers and they're gonna report to a manager. And, that person reports to another manager who eventually reports to the, to the CEO. So um, talking about management today is really uh, important because every single company has one. Um, and the main functions of being a manager, uh, especially at a, a company like ours, is to, is to A, you know, your, your job is that you have the awesome responsibility to um, influence somebody's career. Uh, I think that it involves a lot of coaching um, you know, I played a lot of sports, so I like to, and when I was in school, so I like to kind of um, relate my job currently uh, to maybe like a sports coach, right? It's my job to make, to get the most out of a player, to really invest and see what they're good at, um, what, what areas um, that they could be better at, and ultimately work together as a team to accomplish a common goal. And I think that, 
you know, as, as you guys, you know, when you become freshmen or you're kind of brand new to the, I guess, high school. And then um, when you go to college, that also be a new beginning. And then when you get to the working force, no matter what background you have, you're pretty much starting um, from the ground up. And, I, and uh, that requires, and our job as managers is to make you successful, make you, um, you know, build a level of trust with you to show that this company is the best place for you. And hopefully that you can grow and uh, develop uh, at your, your skills at this, at a company like ours. So that goes, I guess, to the second point. And the final thing is because we're such a company that's growing so fast, it's extremely important uh, for a manager to ensure that, you know, we, we're communicating with one arm of, of the company to another arm. And I, and I think that, you know, being um, somebody, it's your job to make sure that each person feels part of a team and that you're you know, really invested in this company and understand what we're trying to do and what our mission is. And it's, it's on us to kind of um, create that vision uh, and help execute on, on accomplishing all the goals that we're trying to achieve. Um, I don't know if any of you guys wanna, wanna add to that slide or uh, next slide. No, all right. So like I mentioned earlier, I know you guys, I'm not sure how much you guys um, are currently doing this now, but it's really important to set goals, whether they're personal or professional goals, uh, no matter what. It, it could be as little, or it could be a goal as, you know, I want to save money to buy a new pair of sneakers. Um, that would be, I guess, a form of goal setting, but we should, like, it's on us as managers uh, to always be ensuring that we have goals set for ourselves, our teams, and our employees. And I think that a bit, in order for us to be able to kind of achieve where we're getting to. Um, we have to set goals and we have to set them in a timely manner. We have to make them realistic um, and we have to make them achievable. And it's on us as, as managers to help you get there. Um, things that we do, I guess, on a more functional uh, approach is, you know, first and foremost, we need to find the best people to do the jobs. So we have, we're, we're involved with interviewing, we're involved in training, we're involved in making sure that you have a manageable workload, that you're having fun at your job, that you're motivated to do your job really well, that you're inspired to continue to learn and grow and, and really just um, bring the best out of you, I guess, would, would say the essence of our job is. And also, you know, help you in any way, shape or form uh, in the form of a mentor, a teacher, a coach, whatever, you, whatever sort of, um, I guess, Definition, it's all kind of the same thing. And that all kind of goes into being a good manager. Um, also to, to help you as you continue to do a good job, make more money along the way. And I think another thing I'd jump in and add is a good manager is thinking about how to help you grow your career, but they're also thinking about how to make sure your colleagues and the rest of the team are successful as well. And so like Jen said, it's sometimes connecting the dots and like looking at, well, what are other teams doing? What's our goal all together? Um, and so some of the things that you need to be able to do in order to do that effectively are to be able to kind of look at your whole department or your whole group and see, okay, well, where do we need more resources? Or maybe where do we need to make some changes so that everyone succeeds? So um, a good example that I think resonated for me was when you're playing a video game you've got you know your hit points or your life points meter and if you don't take care of that your character is not going to make it right so your department's a little like that if you if your department isn't making money you don't have the resources you need to bring in new team members or if your department is you know got a lot of team members maybe then you need to make sure that they're being used effectively. And so that's another part of what a manager is doing beyond just with an individual. Anyone else have anything we wanted to jump in and add? Well, I have a question. Sure. Again, you mentioned this, that you, you know, you had the opportunity to be a manager at an early age, right? So can you talk a little bit about that? You know, what were some of the things that you were involved in? And, and this, is, this goes to, for, for the rest of you, if you can chime in, about what were some of those things that you were doing uh, professionally to help you kind of move up? 
but also how did you help the teams around you to move up as well? Because, you, you know, you mentioned that, Jim, you know, like you don't have to be in a management position to to help um, others level up too, right? Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, when I first started off, actually, you know, every, every, like ever since I was growing up playing sports, um, I've always wanted to kind of be the best individually, even though I was playing team sports like basketball and soccer. Um, and, and I think I took that mentality into work, uh, into the workforce. So, you know, I was committed and dedicated to be the best at my craft, which was project management at the time. And um, unfortunately, I actually wasn't very good at it. <laughs> Uh, so I had to work really, really hard and I had to take a lot of critical feedback and obviously got to a point where if I didn't shape up, I would lose my job and then I would you know, be out on the street. So it was really important that I had to have a positive attitude, be super resilient. And then, um, you know, I got mentorship from my brother who told me that, you know, you've always thrived to be the best. Like, why couldn't you be the best at, at this position? And, you know, that really resonated with me. And I would never forget because I was like, I know I can do this job just as good as anyone else can do it. And he was just like, that's not the type of attitude I know from you. You're, you, you can be just as good. Why can't you be the best? And then, you know, I really just thrived to be the best. And, and you know, fortunately, things were able to click for me and I had to be a master master my craft and the things where I, so where I actually changed was recognizing, Hey, instead of just being the best and being like accomplishing, like kind of accomplishing on an individual level, what was a lot more rewarding to me was to be able to um, have an opportunity to um, not only be good, like be able to pay it forward and train people to be just as good as me and like see people who are really motivated, good at their jobs and super ambitious and help guide and coach coach them to be really successful. So that was like a pivotal pivotal mental change for me to be like, hey, you know what? Um, I got a lot more joy, satisfaction. And what motivated me was to actually uh, develop others and kind of they get the credit. And then to be able to do that in, in a, t a small team allowed me to kind of take up, give an another opportunity to take on a bigger team. And I continue to as every time I, I took on more responsibility, I would make mistakes, I'd learn from them, and I'd continue to try and grow as a manager. And it became more and more important to me to have those succeed and create other managers. And, you know, I, I think that it's tough a lot of times when you're trying to grow and improve situations um, where you're, the, the attitude's kind of like, oh, well, you know, that's the way things are. So we need to keep doing it that way versus, having the um, foresight or the leadership to be like, you know what, I think we should take a risk and um, try it a different way. And if we do it a different way, that's not working and we can get everybody around me to understand and to give it a shot and trust that, you know, this is probably a better way forward. You just kind of have to, to make that decision um, is, is what really continued to, to allow me to evolve and take on more responsibility and help grow with the company and help not only make myself successful, the people that were working together with successful and ultimately the company successful. Just to piggyback off Jen, I think a big part of being a leader as well is not giving up. A lot of times when you are, you know, trying something for the first time, you may not be great at it. You may get some, you know, negative comments or feedback that may not feel so good but really being able to identify the learning lesson in it all and really growing from there, I think is really important. In everyday life, there's gonna be you know, things that come up. You may not be the best at it. The person next to you, you know, might be faster, might be a better swimmer, might get better grades, but really keeping at it and trying, I think is really important. And being able to take that feedback and learn from it and not really take it from a negative standpoint taking that negative and turning it into a positive is something that I found really helpful throughout my career here at TransPerfect. Um, similarly to Jen, I've been here for nine years and been in management for about seven. So majority of my career has been in a leadership role and really being able to learn from that and also admitting your mistakes. I think a good leader um, is also able to show that humility and knowing when you know, they do need help or you know, leaning on the team so I would say, you know, never give up. And a lot of times, if it doesn't work out the first time, 
try a second or third time because oftentimes you will see the results if you do work hard. And you'll also show your team around you that, you know, there are mistakes to be made, but if you can grow from it, it really does take you a long way. All right. So really important skill for a leader is to value and be able to make the team operate really well. So going back to sports reference, uh, if you guys, you know, you can have, especially in basketball, you know, you have like three best players and they call them in the NBA, they call them super teams. Now that doesn't necessarily always translate into uh, a championship, right? So, um, you know, it's on the coach and the manager to really find the best people and have them work together uh, in the, the most cohesive way properly. It's taking different personalities and finding the right fit so that ultimately you guys are all on the same page to reach that vision that um, I talked about earlier that you set forth. And I, I think that that is extremely important skill uh, to, to be able to learn and do. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys have worked on a group project before, but I think a lot of times um, people who are type A or really excel want to kind of just take on the project because they, they don't have the confidence and maybe in their other teammates. Uh, or, or classmates to, to do a good job. And, and I think that that would, even though like, I guess, logically seems like it makes the most sense, but a manager's job is the opposite. You know, it's to, it's to kind of make sure that you're getting the best out of each team and make sure that each person's doing their part because it really does take a village to be successful in any sort of company. And it's not really just one person kind of running the show and, and doing a great job. Uh, it's, it takes everybody to do, uh, it takes all these talented people to work together for a common goal to be able to be successful. And that's what a leader and a manager really does is to be able to kind of corral all these talented, smart and ambitious people and make sure that they're, they're um, giving them the best opportunity and working together as a team to be successful. Um, it really requires, uh, you know, I, I think we're in a time and a place where you can't just like say, get it done. You know, you have to really lead by example you have to, you know, you shouldn't just because you're the boss or in a leader, leadership position, you shouldn't be doing things or you, sh you shouldn't expect others to do things that you wouldn't do yourself. And I think that that's really important because, you know, at TransPerfect at this company, um, we really pride ourselves on all the leaders, as you know, as Monica mentioned and, and myself and, and Mamiko, we all did the job first and we all mastered our craft in order before we were able to actually uh, train and kind of lead people doing the same role that we did in the past. Um, I just want to add to that. So who here has played uh, checkers or chess? And what are the differences between those two games? So as I'm sure most people have probably played checkers, maybe not chess. But with checkers, all pieces move the same way in the same direction, right? Whereas with chess, each type of piece moves differently. So you really have to know each character to be able to win the game. And with management too, you have to know you... Um, you have to really learn each person's strength and weaknesses to win as a team. So as a manager, you, you need to learn, you need to get to know each person on your team and learn their strength and really understand what motivates them. And as you do that, you're able to work as a team because everyone's using their strength. And when you realize that, um, you realize this, you, you start to appreciate as a team member, pe um, people's strengths and you realize, okay, they're helping me with their strengths and I'm able to help them where I'm good at, which builds a sense of in, uh, community and the team and you become dependent on each other which builds a stronger sense of team. And as you know, there's no I in team, but there is in win. And 
So, you know, I think when you're thinking about playing on sports or working on a school project together, you want to be um, mindful of what each person might be good at. And if you don't know what your uh, what you what your strengths are, you can think back to okay, what was the best day I had at school or at work in the last month, and think about what that was and what you enjoyed the most. And by thinking about that, you might think about oh, you know what, I'm good at um, I'm good at giving tasks to people, or I'm very good at organizing certain things. So, that, and, and, and that, and some, but some people may not be good at those things. So then you start to appreciate each person's uniqueness and individual, individuality. So you never wanna push a knight to move in the same way as a bishop in chess and, um, yeah, I think just knowing your strengths and your team members' strengths helps you as a team to do better and achieve a common goal. And I think with that, knowing that there's, you know, different ways to approach each person, it's also important for you as a manager to learn how to give feedback and how to take feedback, right? If we, it's really easy to get defensive, right? It's really re easy to be like, no, I did it this way and this is the way I did it. That doesn't actually help us grow or move forward. Um, I think that was something I definitely had to learn early in my career um, was to sit with that feedback for a minute before reacting. Um, and I think that's something a lot of people have to do as well. So. I think it's good to practice different scenarios. You can do this just with your friends, with your siblings, and just you know try different th ways of giving feedback and l listen to like, how do you react, right? And how do you shift that reaction if it's immediately coming in hot? Um, so I'm gonna have Jin and Mumiko play out a little scene for you guys. Um, Jin is working for Mumiko and he's late every Friday morning. And Mamiko's getting really frustrated with him. So Mamiko's going to come up with a way to raise the issue. Um, and we'll see how Jin reacts. Hi, Jin. How's it going? I'm good. I've noticed <laughs> I've noticed how that are you? <laughs> I've noticed that every Friday morning you tend to come into the office much later. Is everything okay at home? Or is oh, there another reason why you might be coming in later? Just want to make sure you're okay. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't I didn't realize I was I, was, I kept coming in later. Um, I, I'm really sorry. I, I was uh, the train the train was running late today, so I, I couldn't get in. Okay, so okay. trains then. I see, it, but it seems that it it tends to happen on every Friday, only Friday. <laughs> um, and it, 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 could you try coming in a bit, you know, at a regular time during our, our business hours on Fridays as well? Yes, I, I, I can, I'll try and do that. I'll, I'll try and take the train, that, the, the earlier train. So what's, I think it's a good moment to pause y'all um, and have folks chime in, you know, what do you think Jin did well receiving that feedback? What do you think Mamiko did well giving that feedback? Or what would you guys have done differently? So one of the things that I think Jin did well is that he paused, right? He didn't immediately, he was, he was a little defensive. He definitely was like, it's the train's fault. Um, a lot of times people aren't looking for an excuse or a reason. They're, they're really looking for you to take a moment and reflect on how you can do better. Um, so that might be something that he could have done differently. Um, but ultimately, he did do that, right? He got there. He took a minute and was like, oh, I, I guess I'll work on that. I didn't realize I was doing it. Um, 
other things that you felt they did well or needed? I think acknowledgement, a lot of times, um, you know, you don't necessarily see the trend yourself. You may not realize it as Jen had also mentioned. So the fact that Mamika was able to open up that communication and address it, it made Jen aware of there was a pattern and he needed to, you know, remedy it. So Jen admitted that, yes, you know, he was late, but he also, you know, provided a solution. I will take an earlier train. So although it may be a difficult conversation to have, both parties were able to acknowledge the situation, have a solution, and hopefully moving forward, Jen will be early, if not on time, every Friday. Very good. And I think so, another thing that Mamiko did really well was she checked in to make sure he was okay first, right? She didn't immediately come at him assuming that he was late every Friday because he played video games too late on Thursday night. You know, she she took a moment to say, okay, is there something else going on before I launch into this feedback, which I thought went really well. And so, so I would also say as, as a leader or manager, like your job is to give feedback that isn't always maybe easy to give to people. And so, you know, I think Mamika let it run a couple of times or saw that it was a pattern before addressing it. And, and you know, we say a lot that deviant behavior tends to expand. Um, so what you need to do is kind of, if this is something that it's important that if, if you're constantly on a Friday and you're missing the deadline or, or, or something that you need to be in for a morning meeting and you're, and you're not there for, uh, you know, the first time it happens, um, it's important for a leader to be like, hey, look, I know this is the first time um, you've been late, but, you know, we need you to be here by 8, 8.30 uh, because of X, Y, and Z, ensure that you, you can get your jobs uh, and you can make sure that you hit this meeting. That's really important that we go over strategies or something on Friday. So to be able to address it before it becomes a widespread thing and you're at that point, you're kind of like, oh, you let it slide and that slide until you're like, ah. Like, you're always late, like, but I think Mamiko knowing, I, like Tabby said, I, I think she handled it very, very well with like caring about the employee, but what, what she could do in the future is to, to address it um, sooner before it becomes like a pattern to understand that that's not okay. And yes, as for me, I think taking the accountability <laughs> to say, you know, I, you know, I probably knew I was getting late and because Mumiko wasn't really noticing, I, I, I took advantage of that. And I just kept, you know, if I was playing video games too late or whatever, and I just coming in on Friday, uh, I think there's something that, um, you know, I should recognize and I should have done initially, but a manager's job is to tell me what I'm doing wrong and giving me that feedback inside me to, to like we said earlier, like Monica mentioned earlier, to be um, humble and be accepting of that feedback because, you know, a good manager is going to create a level of trust where when they do give you feedback, it's because they want you to do better versus they're trying to like scold you or, or um, get you in trouble. So I know we've talked a lot about, you know, what it is to be a leader and how to be able to work with a team and be able to inspire others around you. But what are other skills that are important as a manager? A lot of you, I'm sure, have had practice doing so, but presenting and teaching is something that is super important as a manager. Why? Because a lot of times we need to share how our team is doing. We also wanna be able to present to our team some of the bigger picture ideas that might be going on within the company, within the department. So it's really important to be able to share a message concisely and accurately so that your team understands what you're working towards and how you wanna see the team grow. Along with that, you also need to ensure that you are doing the proper research. Are you looking at the correct numbers, looking at certain trends that are happening within the business, within the department? You know, there always is a busy season. So certain times do call for maybe more extreme measures, bringing in the team more, maybe working a little bit longer hours, but it's always really important to be able to provide that in a professional setting to your team so that they understand, you know, what is the goal that we are working towards? Not only that, but also note-taking. You always wanna be able to recap to your team the high level points of, you know, what are the takeaways from this meeting and why is this important for you? So that your message to your team is also super clear. And if you're ever reporting or working with other managers, 
very important to be able to share your message or your mission in terms of you know, how your team is doing and maybe what are the needs of the team so that you're able to move forward with the business. As we see here, PowerPoint presentations are still you know, in our day to day. So even though we are not in school anymore, PowerPoint is a very useful tool to be able to you know, explain your ideas and also outline important points so that your team can visually also see what we're working towards. Now, I'm sure a lot of you in your math classes ask, you know, what am I ever going to use this ever again? I remember, you know, back in my pre-algebra and algebra days, I always asked, will I ever use this formula ever again? But good news is you are learning this for a reason. And some of what we do here as a manager is we use basic algebra just to calculate our gross margin, see how our team is doing, and also be able to track our profitability and set goals for our team, because that's also very important to be able to numerically and number show your team, you know, what is the goal? How much more do we have left to get to that goal? And how will we, how will we be able to achieve that? Other career options. People with management skills excel in many different roles and a leader can you know, look different ways. So roles in HR, roles in recruiting, specifically to TransPerfect and to our teams here, project management is something that if you, know, you are interested in, you definitely can have those uh, paths to become a leader within project management. Also consulting. Now, this is a big question that I remember going into high school. You know, what is after high school, college? And what am I going to be studying? And what is my degree going to be in? Fortunately, managers come from all different types of backgrounds. So there really isn't a one answer. You know, you need to get into this degree or study this in your undergraduate to become a leader. A lot of uh, degrees that we see here at TransPerfect. Uh, most people have um, backgrounds in business management, liberal arts, international relations, and similarly to myself, I actually studied global economics uh, in my undergraduate. But as I mentioned before, anything really can lead you to that success and that path to leadership. So don't feel that you are limited or you have to fall into a certain you know, degree or school because leaders do come in all shapes and sizes. Um, additional education, you, if you are you know, looking to go to get your master's or continue your education past undergraduate, master's of business administration or also master's in management is an option for you. And similarly, we also have some employees or leaders that have military background. What does that look like? It could be officer training, it could also be, you know, more into a traditional sense of a college where they do have the ROTC program, which is the Reserve Officers Training Corps, which I, I know a few friends that, you know, went down that pathway and they were able to find, you know, their niche and what they like in terms of management and were able to also fall into leadership roles, even though it may not have been the traditional four-year undergraduate program. So you definitely don't have to fall within one category to become a leader. As I mentioned, we all have different types of backgrounds. And I think that's what also makes a leadership team or management team successful. You know, we all play to our different strengths. We all come from different backgrounds. So similarly to a team, a management team can, you know, look very different. And together we can build a strong foundation for our colleagues and our employees. ways to build these skills. Now, a lot of times you can ask, you know, am I gonna be a leader? Will I be a manager, you know, in the future? But it definitely takes practice. And I know that, you know, Jen and Miko have touched base on some of those points and what led us to our careers ourselves as managers, but practice taking the lead in a group project or on a team, you know, whether it's sports, whether you are in theater and let's say, you know, you are the lead role, how are you bringing others together? And what are those leadership skills that you yourself 
encompass and embodies and are able to share with the rest of the people around you. Also, mentorship is something that I found very helpful throughout my high school career and also through college and here at TransPerfect, um, being able to listen and also learn from your mentor. Uh, I know we touched base on you know, getting feedback and also giving feedback, but taking feedback as a learning lesson, I think was one of the biggest learning lessons for me, not seeing it from a negative standpoint and being able to turn that negative into a positive really helped me open myself up to the criticism or you know, feedback of others so that I can myself improve as a leader. I think another important role is to also vocalize if you're interested in something. A lot of times people will wait for that opportunity or they're a little afraid to speak up because it might not be the cool thing to do, but being able to vocalize what you're interested in is something that will also open up different types of doors that maybe you never thought possible or even trying something new. I know for myself, uh, when I was in high school, I played or I swam, which swimming is a very much individual sport, but I had a few friends that tried out for water polo, which is a bit more of an aggressive sport than I'm used to. Swimming, you know, you're minding your own business, just working on yourself, but with water polo, you are working as a team. And I started, you know, I tried out for the team and I made it and never did I think that I would be playing water polo, but four years later, it was one of the best decisions of my life. And I was able to create a, a little family for myself. And through that, I was also able to practice some of my leadership skills. So without taking that risk or, you know, saying, hey, maybe this is something I'm interested in, I would have never been able to be able to fall into a team that helped me, you know, move up towards co-captain and really help lead the team. So being able to be open-minded and really take some of those opportunities might be a little risky, but you'll learn a lot about yourself and those around you. Uh, public speaking uh, is a little nerve wracking for some, but I will say being able to practice uh, it with your family, you know, maybe making a speech at a birthday party with your friends is something that, you know, can always lead you to that public speaking platform. So really being able to practice that, whether it's speaking in front of your class, maybe making a speech or at a rally, you are, you know, practicing as MC. So there are different ways to be able to practice that. It doesn't have to necessarily be in front of a large crowd. It could be a small group of people, but being able to practice that is definitely helpful in becoming a leader. And last but not least, I know I mentioned taking risks, but getting out of your comfort zone. Um, I think this is probably challenging for most people. Some do it better than others, but really being able to try new things, things that maybe you never did, is something that will help build towards that leadership role that maybe you're looking for. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for all of your really valuable advice. I feel like I've been learning a whole lot. Um, I'd be curious to hear if we have any questions from our audience or from Manny, anything that folks are hoping to know from our team of experts here. You know, I always have questions. <laughs> and I, uh, I think in I, I really like that analogy of chess and checkers, and I've never thought of it that way, um, which is which is really important um, because when we're in school, we're we're always so focused on you know what am I good at? What am I good at? We don't think about it. What is what is the, my my classmate? What are my classmates good at? That if I'm paired in a, in a group with them, we would be able to you know be the best group that that we can be. Um, Monica, you mentioned the, the mentoring part. And I think that that's really key. One of the things, one of the ways in which students can, can develop um, managerial skills through mentoring is through one of the activities that we use called feel good jar. And this is one of the things you can do even at home, right? So what I'm, I'm gonna encourage you all to do is think of it this, um, it could be a cup, it doesn't have to be a jar per se, but like with your name and do an activity with, with your family uh, and, and ask them to write the, your strengths, what they, you think, 
what they think you're good at because those who spend the most time with you are quick to know the negatives too, uh, right? But but more importantly, we're keeping this on the positive side. In, in turn, what you're gonna do is they're also gonna have cups and you're gonna do that because it is an art, right? I mean, and, and we heard it loud and clear, you as a manager need to identify strengths in others. So it's a give and take. So you're gonna be learning about your, your strengths, but you're also gonna be recognizing those strengths for other people. And just in a piece of paper, you just drop it in and then leave it out for a week. And then after the week, come by, read those strengths. And that's how you're going to start identifying what are some of the things that you're good at. And what you want to do is have a little discussion with your family or with a group of friends about those skills. So the next time you have an opportunity to be in a group, now you can put into practice how you're going to identify. You might not necessarily have to say it out loud what those strengths might be, but identifying and pinpoint where they could be beneficial. And I'm telling you, it's going to, it's going to change the dynamic of groups. I mean, who hasn't been in a group, in a team or in a team that wasn't as productive as it needed to be, right? Like it's just a rite of passage, but what if you can start now on identifying strengths in your groups, not just about yourself, but also about others. I think you're going to, you know, you all will be the next gen Monica and Momiko of, of the world because you are, are going to be getting a head start on, on how do you develop those management skills. So I'd, I'd also probably want to, I, I don't know, we're probably close to out of time, but I just want to have one more thing. Um, and I'm not trying to ruin um, friendships here, but I, I would say, uh, you know, if there's somebody that you really trust and, you, and you're working on, we talked about giving feedback and taking feedback and obviously they're your best friends, you really trust them and just kind of, you know, just start by saying, okay, well, I want to learn how to take some constructive criticism, knowing that that's an exercise and ask somebody that you really trust. Hey, whether it's your mentor or your a teacher or, or your friend and be like, hey, what, what is one thing you think I can improve on? And if, and if they say something really see how your body feels or like your emotions feel when they, when they tell you. And if they, and if you start getting defensive right out of the bat and start getting mad or start blaming them, that's probably a natural human reaction to, to being told that maybe you're not good at something, especially as somebody that, that is supposed to be your friend, but friends are supposed to, um, and, and teachers are mentors and, and leaders in general are supposed to help you recognize, not just kind of tell you everything that you're good at and just yes you all the time, because at the end of the day, uh, you know, you're constantly growing. And I think we mentioned, Monica mentioned it too. Uh, we made a lot of mistakes and you know, the people that really become more, more successful are people who learn from their mistakes. The only way you learn that you make a mistake is, is to recognize you made one or you get that sort of feedback. And I think that there are little ways that you can do even, even now as students at a, at a young age to practice that skill. Um, I, I do think it's, a, it's important because taking feedback, applying it, and then um, demonstrating that you can grow and improve on it, I think is, is a really good way. And I know it's, it, and that's kind of the foundations of becoming a good leader, right? You need to be able to learn how to listen uh, to others to be able to understand what they're thinking, to, to apply it, to, to be better yourself. And that's something that we try and practice all the time here. That's a great way to wrap it up. Well, I could, we could probably go for, for a few more hours, but we want to be mindful of your time and, and really thank you for, for taking the time out of your day and sharing your expertise and, and your awesome uh, knowledge with us. So with that, we're going to turn it off and um, invite you back in a future webinar. So we'll see you now. Bye, everyone. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks all. Thank you.